corrupt. What's good? Oh man, I'm just posting with my brother, man. He's just always he's a bully. <laughs> you know, I gotta let him know. Tell me about the new project. Oh man, you know Corrupt Moon Rocks mixtape, man. You understand me? It's uh Grand National. I'm very proud of it, man. New and original corrupt records. You can't beat it. What artists worked on this project with you? Well, you know, I had uh, my big homie uh, Be Real, my uncle. Oh yeah, Uncle Be Real got on there, and then I also had uh, 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 my little homie Wiz Khalifa. He blessed me super big. He's the man, and uh, uh, you know I got a couple other folks on there, man. New talent, you know, Young LA and uh, people like that, man. You know what I'm saying? It came and gave me they all. You know what I'm saying? Kevo. Notch production wise, mm -hmm. Ayo Miko production wise. It's a good record. Good mixtape. What do you think is different right now about the music scene right now than it was in the 90s? Well, the difference is. You, you guys know, were just dominating everything. Well, you know what I mean? The difference is that it's new, new music and uh, new talent. So, you know, it changes, you know what I'm saying? And uh, I think it's hard for people to accept that change. Yeah. But it's all good. You feel like uh, for, for a while, people were just sleeping on the West Coast? Like you just didn't see a lot of new artists that came out. Totally. And it was just popping. It seemed like Game was, a, was between Game and like Kendrick. It was like a gap of like seven, eight years. Music isn't about a coast. Music is about whoever puts out a good project. And that's the problem. Everybody talking about, okay, West Coast taking over, and this coast take over, that coast. It's not about the coast. It's about the music, man. And um, I think that's where we get lost at. It's about the music. The key to the game is not what coast is dominating. It's about how Hip hop is the number one form of music in America today. When it started on the streets of New York City, yeah, that's what it's all about. You know, a, a lot of people know you from the West Coast, but you actually grew up in Philly. Yeah, I'm born in Philly. At what point did you move? When I was 16. Okay. Okay, so from 16 on, you, you, were, you were in L.A.? Indeed. Okay. Now, what part of L.A. Did you, were you at during that time? Hawthorne. Hawthorne. My okay. father lived in Compton. He moved to Hawthorne because he didn't want me in the streets, so he moved to Hawthorne. And uh, I moved to Hawthorne with my father. Then I moved to my neighborhood off of Crenshaw and Slauson. Okay. When I was uh, 18. Okay. Indeed. What was it like going from Hawthorne to Crenshaw Slauson, which, you know, was a very, very different type of I place. I mean, you know, it was pretty good because the neighborhood loved me because I was on the mic and they was like, you know, I was the, the neighborhood MC, you know okay. what I'm saying? Neighborhood rapper, they would just love me like, man, corrupt. You know, he from the neighborhood and, and he busses, so yeah. it wasn't really bad, but it did um, have a reflection on my life it had a, a imprint on my life for my mentality. The people who helped raise me at that time to become a man, Draws, Nicky Bam, and, and Big Bam, and Chico, and, uh, you know, Sleep, Key to Rock. You know, all of these influences that was like, we don't want you to be like us, we want you to be better. It was like that neighborhood story. Mm -hmm. And it was real, and I was shocked, you know, which, to tell you the truth, the more they didn't want me to be from the neighborhood, the more I wanted to be from the neighborhood. <laughs> it's crazy. Was that, was that the first time you were around gangs when you moved to, to, to Crenshaw? Oh, Austin? no, no, no. You know, when I first moved to Auburn, when I, when I, well, fuck. When I was young and I used to come and visit my father, because I would visit every summer mm -hmm. before I moved there. And he lived in Compton then, so I'd be around my cousin Berger. And uh, he was in the Santanas, and I'd go see my Auntie Carolyn, my, my Auntie Carolyn, and Mackie, and Berger. 
and all of them. And uh, that was the first game thing I saw. You know, Burger was active. And then, you know, uh, you know, moving to Hawthorne, my first real gang experience was all through Hawthorne as far as, you know, actually getting checked or somebody on your heels. You know, nigga, take them shoes off. I ain't taking shit off. Oh, yeah, I'm going to go to my house and get my gun and shoot you. Mm. Now, I'm like uh, 17 years old. This kid was like 13. Wow. I'm going to okay. go to my house and get my gun and shoot you. I said, man, get out of here, little boy. He said, what? Started pedaling. Oh, he was on his bike. Yeah, on a oh. bike. We tried to jack you on his bike. Man, on a his little bicycle. boy came up to me because I went and picked my nephew up from a Hawthorne Intermediate. Mm -hmm. Each day I would come go and get him. This is when I graduated. Because I was 17 when I graduated. I went and get the kid this one day. And, you know, Little boy came up to me and said, such and such said, you need to take your shoes out. It was a little boy. He had to be like nine. Wow. I'm like, what are you talking about? I mean, he, he, such and such said, you need to take your shoes out. I'm like, man, get out of here, little boy. He said, okay. He went down there and told the kid, and the kid rode up on a bike. He said, blood, you need to take your shoes off. Huh. They had my all blue Nikes on, Air Force. Oh, because you were wearing blue. Yeah, I had my blue Nikes on, all blue. I didn't know it was a blood neighborhood. It's fucking Hawthorne, for right. God's sake. <laughs> fucking like the suburbs around <laughs> this mother. Not no more. Okay. That nigga said, hey, blood, you gotta take them shoes off. I was like, man, I ain't taking shit off. Get out of here, little boy. You was a kid. He said, what? I go to my house and get my gun and shoot you. I said, man, get out of here, little boy. He said, okay. Woo. The, the only thing is, you know, I knew he was serious, especially the way he left. So, so as soon as he started to pedal off, you're like, okay. Like, man, I ain't worried about this kid. I told my nephew, come on, come on. We're going to play a game. It's called Who Can Get to the House Faster? Come on. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. It's uh, chucking. So I'm out of this motherfucker. Yeah. This nigga was not playing, man. He was serious. Did you run into I him again? I gang banging then. Did you ever run into him again? Nah, thank God I don't, because I'm from 60s. So it'd be all bad. No, I meant like after that, you know, like a couple days later, a week later. Oh, he, no. he didn't live in the neighborhood or nothing? Well, I mean, he yeah, must have. He lived he in that neighborhood. Right, because he went to the house. was down the street. I know who he is. He's right. a killer. Oh, yeah, yeah. He lived down the street and down the corner to the right. Hey, okay. He was no joke. And he grew up house. to be a beast. So it started early. Yeah. You know oh, man, he's real. You know what I'm saying? And, you okay. know, that's, you know, that, I've been around the real ones, man. You know, I ain't the toughest man on the planet. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I've been through some scuffles and things where I had to get, you understand me? I'm just corrupt, cuz, you know what I'm saying? I, I'm not active. I don't gang bang. You understand me? My neighborhood is Crenshaw and Slauson in the 60s. That's where I'm from, and that's just it. But uh, I sure did chuck down them streets, I tell you that. And any nigga that tell you they didn't ever have an altercation like that, they lying. <laughs> if you in these streets. So so when you moved to, to Crenshaw Slauson. Yeah. Is that when you first actually joined a gang? Indeed. Okay. And that mm -hmm. was the the Rolling Sixties. Of course. Okay. Indeed. Okay. What what changed in your life after after you joined? Because that was the first time you ever joined a gang. At that point, I grew up. You know what I'm saying? I had to ride. I had to push. You know what I'm saying? I had to stand my ground. You know what I mean? That's what you got to do. Once you get involved, it's over. You got to ride it out. And I made it. And okay. I'm here now. Now, uh, you were already rapping for a while by the time you, you moved. Indeed. You moved over there. You were the hot rapper, you know, in your area. 
But at what point did, did you hook up with, with Daz Snoop and, you know, things started? No, I, hooked up with, I hooked up with Snoop first. Okay. Uh, at the Roxy. You know, we battled. Oh, y'all battled? Totally. Okay. So, so how, how did this battle come together? I never well, heard the story before. Domino was there at the Roxy performing. Okay. Uh, for their little thing that they be having where they have uh, new artists come through. Mm-hmm. I forget what they called it back then. Um, and then I was last week's winner. Okay. So I came as a special guest. So I was there, you know, I'm all, you know, I had LA with me, dog and them was Long Beach. Yeah. So it was Long Beach, LA, and it was like, I'll go, ooh, blah, blah. and my sister Diamond, she's the key to the game. And Diamond was just like, you know, none of y'all want to see Cooper. <laughs> and uh, that's when, uh, you know, the battle commenced and Beefy Loke on the beat and Snoop was like, I'll see Corrupt. And uh, we battled and by the end of the battle, Dog was freestyling like, you know, whoever, you know, you tight, I'm tight. We might as well whoop bop the wham and bam, 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 whoever make it first, let's do this. And then I came uh, in like, you know what, you right. Whoop bop the bam and whoop bop the whoop and then you know, it just happened like that. Who won that battle? That was, it was definitely on the even. On the even. Then dog okay. was tight. <laughs> okay. I mean, Trump. Okay. It was like East meets West. Yeah. Because I'm rapping about beheading people and murder and mayhem and destruction and all this. And as tight as my lyrics was, because my shit, I freestyled everything. Okay. That's all I do. But it was just like, you know, my shit is precision. It's like pinpointing. It's like needles. Mm-hmm. A dog was like that, but he was talking about shit that the, that L.A. could relate to, like six four Chevys and this, that, and that. But he was spilling like corrupt, mm-hmm. you know. And I'm like, damn, like he's spilling rhymes that's connecting, like Jesus Christ, damn. And I'm like, is he really from the West Coast? He might be like me. He must be like from the East Coast and came to the West or something. No, he from Long Beach. Right. Oh, it was great. Dog was great. I mean, he was just talking about shit, though, that was just so relative to the house. Where I'm talking about Jupiter and Mars and destroying <laughs> people and crushing buildings and, and Dog was hitting them with rolling in 6-4 Chevys and shit, but he was precise like I was. Yeah. I was startled, me personally. All right. Okay, so y'all pretty much formed the dog pound kind of at that point? Nope. Dog got with Dr. Dre and seen Diamond at a picnic when Death Row first got together. Okay. Dr. Dre left Eric. He left Easy. And um, Diamond was there and he was like, you know, she just kept talking about this nigga named Corrupt. And Dr. Dre was like, well, you know, where's he at, you know? He was like, man, this is that and that's this. And then Snoop was like, said something or whatever. And Diamond looked at him like, you remind me of the skinny nigga who tried to battle my homeboy back in the days, you know? Wait, how much time had passed between this? Like a year and a half. Okay, all right, so a while, yeah. Right, and then uh, Snoop was like, you remind me of this bitch that fucking kept talking shit about this one little skinny nigga. And he said, you are her. He said, where's corrupt? And he said my name. She was like, what? Snoop? Okay, you know what? Or I think he told her the name. Either way it went. She called me and was like, I'm here with Dr. Dre and Snoop. And this is that, this, this. She called me. I'm, I'm in Hawthorne at my mama's, my mama Ray. Yeah. I'm like, man, Diamond, you're right. Nobody wanna hear this shit. Diamond, what do you want? She was like, man, I'm here with Dr. Dre and Snoop and and we doing this and that and this. Dr. Dre wanna talk to you. I said, yeah, right. You ain't no <laughs> motherfucking Dr. Dre. And then he said, hello. And I was like, oh my God, this is fucking Dr. Dre. This is Dr. 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 Dre. 
Hey, Dr. Dre, what's up? Hey, what's going on? You know, uh, yeah, you know, we up here, man. You should come through, and this is that, and that's this. I want to hear what you, you know, what you, what you got. I said, oh my God, Dr. Fucking Dre. Um, I'll be there. I'll be there in, in, in the inkling of a second. Okay, okay. I'm gonna do that. Uh, I'm talking with Dr. Motherfucking Dre, cuz. Oh, I'm in. I'm in. <laughs> once I get around Dr. Dre, and he hear these rhymes I got. Oh yeah, I'm in. You understand me? I'm gonna win. Cause I'm a beast. I'm a fucking monster, man. I am the fucking equinox. You understand me, man? I'm the juggernaut, man. Ooh, that was exciting. Diamond did it. I always gotta give it up for my sis Diamond. Mm. She did that. And the dog stamped me. As soon as I walked in the park, yeah. I called my brother Broomy. And that's what took me as soon as I walked in the park. I looked to the left, seen this guy on the gate. I knew. Oh, that's Snoop. I knew it. Went straight over to him, and I posted up on the gate right next to him. He was like, what's up, corrupt? He knew it was me. Mm. And I knew it was him. He was like, what's up, corrupt? I was like, what's up, Snoop? He was like, nothing. <laughs> I, said, I just posted and we rode out from there. Okay. Now, at, at that point, the chronic hadn't come out yet. Not at all. Not even deep cover. Deep cover hadn't come out yet. Mm -mm. Okay. So, Aftermath Records had. Well, well, what about. It was Death Row. It was. Buckle. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Right. Or not, that's what I mean. But I mean, it was. Right when they formed, they like was it a real label at that point, or was Dre yep. kind of between labels? It's a real label. Okay, so he had the money. Okay, and Snoop was the first artist, and Rage, Snoop and Rage was the first two signed in Death Row. Okay, when the Chronic dropped, nobody was signed. Not me, not Daz, not RBX, nobody besides oh, really? Rage and Snoop. Well, when D Deep Cover came out, and everybody's ears perked up. Because it was the first shit that you heard from Dre in a long time. That was the first video. And the, yeah. When that video dropped, Dr. Dre and them accepted me. I was in, and uh, we all showed up at the video, and I just felt like a star. I felt special. I felt like, wow, like I'm in. Yeah. And we just showed up at the video, and we were just there. It wasn't about us being in it or anything else. It was just about being there. Yeah. And it showed me what stardom is about. The video came out. Mm -hmm. Everyone started getting excited about Dre's back. He got a new artist. You know what I mean? I remember like, oh, Dre got this new dude. Like, you know what Indeed. I mean? Snoop Doggy Dog. Uh, you remember that, huh? It wasn't Snoop. <laughs> it wasn't Snoop Dog. It was Snoop nah. Doggy Dog. Yeah, it was. And I, I remember. And the, the movie was dope. So kind of the whole energy around it was was real cool. So you guys were working on the Chronic at that point. Right. Well, you know, you you were very instrumental on that album. What, what what do you think was your greatest experience working on that album? The first record Dr. Dre allowed me to be on, which was Strand on Death Row. Okay. You know, and uh, he, he finally gave me my opportunity. He said, Corrupt, um, I got this record for you. Take it home, write to it. This is the record I want you to be on. Mm -hmm. Boom, 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 boom. boom. <laughs> I said, oh my God. That's when I knew, like, I'm officially in now. Yeah. Dr. Dre's giving me a beat. Oh my fucking God, <laughs> this is amazing. <laughs> I'm in, I'm in. I am fin to destroy every MC on the planet. What changed With you know? Dr. Dre and Snoop and Suge's clearance, that is. Right. As soon as they let me go, cuz I'm Wolverine, man. I'm gonna eat everything moving, my nigga. I'm slicing dice. They're onions, man. They're onions to me, cuz. Just break them down into pieces, my nigga. So, 
when Dr. Dre sent me that strand on death row, gave me that, and then I laid it, and Dr. Dre liked it, I said, I'm in. <laughs> Forget it. Now, you know, I had heard Dre makes you do a line 383 times. Like, was, was he doing that, you know, when you were in the chronic? If it's not right. You know what I mean? You're going to do it 360 times. Right. But when you, you know, one take Jake, one take Willie <laughs> from Philly, like, got him. You got that in one take? Man, I hit, I hit uh. shit immediately. Okay. Wow! Dr. Dre be like, ooh. <laughs> But nowadays, though, Dr. Dre be like, redo it, redo it, redo it, redo it. Redo it, redo it. I be like, damn, cuz I'm getting old. <laughs> when you can get Dr. Dre to tell you, that's it. Oh, yeah. Oh, man, he's a perfectionist. And his perfection changes lives, bucko. Changes lives, buddy. So you were on The Chronic. Indeed. And then you were on Doggy Style. Of course. And uh, then dog food dropped? Nope. Uh, murder was the case. Murder was the case, right. The murder was the case dropped. And you, you were on every one of those. Of course. You know? I made the cut. Every time. That's what we called it, making the cut. Making the cut. I got to make the cut. If you okay. make the cut, you in. You in. You, but you you know what? You can be a star. That don't mean you're going to make the cut. Okay. Okay. Yeah, get it together. You got to make the cut. Um. If you make the cut, you good. Now with Dr. Dre, that, that cut is not easy. <laughs> Six O cut. And after money was the case, was above the rim. And above the rim. Above the rim was dog food. Okay. And after dog food was escape. <laughs> Tupac came up. Right. It was destruction. That's when we started smashing the globe. And after Tupac, my bad, I said it backwards. Yeah. After dog food was Tupac. Yeah. Then after Pop was escape. We're out of here. Okay. What, what, d describe what what changed because because y'all y'all was already major major stars. Life, but by the time Tupac Life showed up, is what made things change. Yeah. Of course, everybody grew up. That's the first thing about change. You grow up, and then it's over. Because cause you and Tupac had a few songs, right? Of course. Now, how many songs did you have with Pac? Who knows? <laughs> still still Ballin' was originally you and, you and Pac, right? Motherfucking right. Right, I remember. I remember. Yeah, uh, you and Pac, man. You know, running the muck. But see, we knew Pac before he came to death row. Oh, really? Of course. Poetic Justice. There's a, Oh, ah, right. okay. Warren G did his record, and me and Daz had Niggas Don't Give a Fuck on there with Snoop. Mm -hmm. Of course, we've been New Pac, man. We used to go see him in Atlanta and all kinds of shit, man. Pac was from, he was with us. Cool. That's why he came home. That's why Suge kicked in for him. Cause we sure. know him. We knew him. And then he came home. Death Row was a home. It wasn't just a record label, it was a home. A home for us delinquents and monsters and beasts who had a talent but couldn't get it out. And Suge gave us that lane. Suge and Dr. Dre mm -hmm. and Snoop. The, the New York, New York video. Indeed. Uh, a shooting happened during that video. Totally. That's why we kicked over everything that we could think of. Aha. Uh -huh. So, so the 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 kicking down the buildings was almost like a a response to the shooting happened. Originally, the video wasn't supposed what to be like reason that. Would we do it? Hmm. How, how tense was the situation at that point when you guys did that video? It wasn't oh. tense until they shot at us. Uh huh. Totally. And then, then it got it got worse. Motherfucking right. Were we you once? We was hurt. We thought New York would love us for that record. It's a Melly Mel record. Yeah. It's New York, New York. Big city of dreams. And I put battle raps on there, and we thought they would love it because it was like, you know, New York is the epicenter, it's the mecca. Yeah. Of this mic, 
And I put that mic shit on there, man. And we thought we, they, we was like, we in now. Oh, we in. All we gave a fuck about was winning over New York and them saying, you guys are good. Huh. You guys are tough. That's all we gave a fuck about. Not record sales, none of that, but you just, I just wanted to be known as a great MC. And they shot at us, cuz, while we kicked everything the fuck over. So, because uh, we don't know who the shooter is. And right. There was, no fuck. He was like, fucking dust in the wind, nigga. Nobody know who Cuz is. So, originally, it, the whole concept of the video was supposed to be completely different. It was supposed to be. The whole a, concept a, a, of an, an the original to video was to yeah. get all the New York rappers in with us. Yeah. And have a good time with Times Square. We wanted Nas there and Biggie and yeah. everybody that was rocking at the time. We wanted them right there. Big L, I think we're still alive. Big L, yeah. we're in the mall. Come on through, man. This this record is dedicated from the West Coast to you guys huh. who opened up these doors for us. They didn't see it like that. And they shot at us. Well, they didn't, but the Somebody. streets, the streets did. The streets did. They wouldn't understand it. They, I mean, they couldn't understand it, and they just rebelled. They had a little help. Somebody told them. You guys were shooting. Somebody the gave them some pump up to make them want to respond to us that way. So since we couldn't pinpoint nobody, we came up with the number one, the only thing we could think of. We gonna let New York. And the entire world know the way we feel. Since we got shot at and people could have got hurt. And then we're going to go to New York a week after the video is released. Uh -huh. To let them know that this is serious to us and real. Now we're here. Shoot us again. Nothing happened though. Exactly. Thank God. Because you know what would have happened if it did. We wasn't leaving then. <laughs> Six out. Now, this shooting happened after the Source Awards, or or before? Before. Good question. If I wasn't so old, I probably remember. <laughs> around around the, but it was around that time. <laughs> I don't know. You, know. you tell me. You're the historian. You know <laughs> I've just lived it, you know? Shit, goddammit. August of 1995. Was what? Was when the the shoot when the uh, the Source Awards happened. Source Awards in August of 95. Ah, indeed. I think definitely the Source Awards happened first. <laughs> yeah. Of course. Yeah. If we have got shot at and went to the Source Awards, cause it'd have been all bad. <laughs> you could better believe that. Okay. And that's not just us. I ain't talking about us. New York. New York would have went crazy. They yeah. just dumped on us and we come up into the Source Awards. New York ain't no punk cause they are not punks. They came to that motherfucker boy. Like, you know what? We got, we, woo. Ooh -wee. Will you? <laughs> you hear me? Yeah, so definitely Source Awards happened first and then New York, New York. Definitely. Because after New York, New York, I'm sure. Yeah. Whew, I don't know if niggas would have made it out to Source Awards without bodies on the floor. When Shug got on stage and, and said what he said about, about Puffy and them, I mean, did you guys have an idea about what was about to happen? We didn't give a fuck. Who would give a fuck? Yeah. Once Shook pushed, it was over, man. Puffy's yeah. a good friend of mine. Yeah. But shit, man, you know, we from you know, off the coast. There ain't nothing we can do at that point but get down. So, you know, we wasn't really thinking about none of that, but we love Puffy and Biggie. Yeah. So we was at it was like a, oh, fuck. You know what I mean? Because we love Puffy, we love Biggie. Shug pushed the line. Yeah. Now what are we supposed to do? The only thing to do is smash. Well, you're on a certain side at that point. You can't really play the middle ground anymore. What middle ground? Right. From death row from the door. Yeah. Dog pound gangster crit. Yeah. That's what we're pushing. From the door. 
So, our bad. When when you look at how things ended up with with the you know the shootings. Well, see, the thing you is, know, with, with even when losing. we was in that zone, yeah, that's what made everybody separate. Because it's like we don't agree with certain things. Because okay. that could have cost us our lives, or we could have hurt somebody we really like okay. and love. You know what I'm saying? So we was like, man, we done with this shit. Because we love Puffy, we love Biggie. Period. That showed us real right there where we might definitely have to hurt these guys. And we don't want to hurt Puffy or Biggie. I mean, fuck, man, that's preposterous. And then at the same time, there's other things going on. We don't want to hurt these guys as well. And then Dr. Dre leaves. That's over. Game over. Dr. Dre's gone. And then Pac is here going ham. On everything. Everything. And we used to really love that type of shit. But <clears throat> we got older. We was getting older. We becoming men. And it's like, uh, mm. it's just a little too late. The ham is a little too late. We're done. You know, after Dr. Dre left, I was the first one to leave. Not Snoop, not Daz, nobody. Me. I was the first one to leave from the dog pound. Right after Dre left. Right after Dr. Dre. Dr. Dre left, and then I left. Okay. So well, when you wanted to leave, it. when you wanted Forget to leave, it. was there a Forget it? <laughs> Not here. <laughs> I mean, was it easy to leave, you know, contract wise and stuff like that, or was Never. it No. Not easy. No, the one who taught me how to leave was Lisa Left Eye Lopez. Right, because she was with Death Row at one point. Right. Uh -huh. Before all of that, when I left that room, it was Lisa who taught me how to leave. And how was that? How I could leave business wise. Okay. Um, how, how, how did. How if did I left tell eye, you, I got to kill you. How, how did Left Eye join Death Row? I've always, I've always wondered the, the who story. Who knows, man? Lisa was hood, man. Lisa was raw and uncut. Yeah. It doesn't matter. Who knows, man? Lisa picks her own shit. She does it. And, Fuck, what can you do? And she worked a lot with you guys? Oh, definitely. Okay. This was a worker. That's all she did was work, 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 work. Her and Natina, my son's mother, Natina, Reed, yeah. black. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry about your loss, by the way. Ah, she was a great lady. She was a great lady, man. And, uh, you know, and she gave me my son. You know, it's crazy. She was such a great lady. So, Tupac was there, and Death Row was still going going crazy. You decided to leave at that point. I decided to leave because, um, I mean, you know, just to be honest, went the real or the fake? The real. All right. You know, I'm a, my girlfriend at the time was the number one girl in the world. Foxy right, Brown? Well, right before I got with her. Before I got with Inga. Okay. Before then, I uh, I decided I'm going to move back to Philly. And I got in some trouble. And I met some people who was good at business, Joe Maroon, who could get me out of my situation and all that. He was a lawyer. And I decided to make him an executive introduce him to this game. Mm -hmm. Then I met Foxy Brown. Then when I got with Foxy Brown, I knew it was real. I mean, my girlfriend is the biggest shit in the globe. Right. And you guys were engaged. I'm fucking, I am corrupt. <laughs> I am the greatest MC from the West Coast. And now I got this thing in Philly with such a great partner, Joe Marone, and Ty mm -hmm. and Freddie, how can you beat it? Things were lighting up. So that's when I said, you know what, I'm out this motherfucker for real. And I flew all my shit back. I sold all my dogs. I had a kennel of 22 dogs. I sold them all. Okay. Got it. Sold my house in Van Nuys. I'm out of here. I'm going to Philly. My, my, my bitch is from New York. You hear me? 
Mm-hmm. And she's number one. Right. God damn it. Right. And the firm was coming out. You know what I mean? This is before Il Nana. Before Il Nana. Yeah. But it was it was after Ain't No with Jay Z. Ain't no. When I got with Inga, she had just dropped Touch Me Tease Me. Right, with Case. With Case. Yeah. Man, yeah. I'm out of this bitch. She was finna drop, Def Jam was finna drop. Boom, 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 boom. Now I guess you don't know what that. Uh, How did it go? What, what, tell me some more of it. Right, I mean, I, I know all her songs boom, from that era. Who's tonight? Baby on me. See, I don't know the original, you know what I'm saying? I mean, because the original is the key. But Inga's version, I guess you would say is, uh oh, uh oh. Yeah. Ooh, Ooh, baby. Gotta take you home with me tonight. Uh oh, uh oh. Yeah. Right, with, the first with, uh, scene Black Street. From Il Nana. Yeah. The, the, right. The, the, the Black Before, Street. this is what I'm talking about. Il Nana take, take wasn't even tonight. out yet. Yeah. Okay, yeah. She already did Ain't No Nigga. And then the Nutty Professor soundtrack dropped, and she had the first single with uh, Case. Yeah. Touch Me, Tease Me. And she was about to drop uh, uh, Take You Home. Yeah. Gotta take you home with me tonight. Bam! And that's when me and Inga hooked up. Okay. And you guys got engaged? Indeed. Okay. I loved it to death. I can't lie. I can't lie. I loved it to death. Now, oh, now, fuck uh, the mic up. Uh, on your album, you talked about something happening between her and DMX. Yeah, indeed. You know, I felt that uh, my dog told me not to do it. He said, you know, that's really not the game. I did it anyway. I paid the cost, you know, for doing it. I disrespected Inga. I should have never disrespected Inga. No matter what she did, you know, she's fuck. She's just Inga. And I loved her to death. And that's the whole thing. It made me so upset about it. I didn't know how to handle my feelings. I was a kid. I mean, did a you know grown it was grown tr- kid. Did yeah. you know it was true or was it just a rumor? It was irrelevant. Okay. Yeah, you know, it's like, you know. I disrespected the woman that I loved, and you know, I smashed Earl, I smashed DMX. He ain't really did nothing to me. Mm-hmm. Had you yeah. ever run into him after that song? Indeed. Came out? Yeah. We're good friends right now. Oh, and y'all? He's my guy, man. I fucks with uh, DMX, man. He's a good nigga, man. What, 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 was, what was his, when y'all had that first conversation, after, you know? After that straight, song came you out. know, when I, I saw him, it was on a humbug at the airport, me and Hump. And I seen him, and we just started talking, man. It was like, that's dope. that shit wasn't even there. You know what I mean? Okay. And that's how I knew, like, you know, this is a good nigga, man. Fuck what people saying, or fuck what anybody thinks. They saying the same shit about me, man. Yeah. So he's just like me. You know what I mean? And, uh, then I seen him again recently with uh, Dana Dane. Okay. Dana Dane's coming through the airport, DMX. Talk with DMX. And then Dana Dane came through. Chilling talk with Dana Dane and DMX. And, <laughs> That's dope. You know, DMX just confirmed that, you know, we're really still cool. And I like him, you know what I'm saying? He, he stay hood. He talks to me about real shit. He doesn't hold nothing back. What's on his mind, he lets me know, cause that's the type of friend I like. Right. You know what I'm saying? It's gonna be real. And uh, DMX is that type of nigga, man. Same thing with Ja Rule, I can't lie. Yeah. I and fuck with Ja Rule. Ja Rule was real ja Rule cool been, with me, cause cool we did the movie Half Past Dead, and yeah. you know we chopped it, and you know I fucks with these niggas, cause. And them was some cool niggas to me. I know that much. I don't know how they are with everybody else, but with me, they was cool. And I'm riding for them. That's it. I'm 60s. Uh, I interviewed Talib Kweli a while back. Ooh, wee. My guy. My homie. That's my killer. 
And in Talib. the Talib. So when I interviewed Talib Kweli, this was in, I'm looking up right now, it was August of 2013. Mm-hmm. And this got half a million views on YouTube. Mm. He said that, that Kendrick was quoting you in the um, in his verse, Indeed. in the control verse. It's not killer. Sleeper cell. You call you called yourself the king of New York in a in a previous song. And when he said it, a lot of people didn't realize it. King but that of New was York, a, what is the king of New York? What did corrupt mean? You tell me. About king of New York. What was the whole verse? Hmm. Incredible. Hold on. Maybe I can look it up. You are mine, you Kendrick's. Your verse. I'm important like the Pope. I'm the king of New York. I'm live from South Central. I'm a Muslim on pork. Mm. That means I'm the fucking worst. And that's all it meant. I'm the fucking worst. I'm important like the Pope. I'm important, nigga. I'm the king of New York. His name was Frank White. You notice how since somebody from the West Coast will say they're the king of fucking New York, they automatically assume we're disrespecting New York. Right. I'm sick of that shit. We don't have a problem with you, New York. Stop it, my nigga. King of New York is a fucking movie. Mm. It's a fucking movie. Biggie called himself Frank fucking White. Who is Frank White? Christopher Walken. Wrong. He's the fucking king of New York. It's a fucking movie, man. We don't want your city. Your country, your town, we know what, we from Los Angeles, we from Compton, nigga, Watts, Inglewood, nigga, we are the West Coast. Why the fuck would we want to be where you at, nigga? We don't like your fucking streets. We like ours, cuz, ours. We don't have a problem with you guys, my nigga. We don't have a problem with y'all, cuz. Sorry about that. I had to get that up. We don't have a problem with you, New York. Stop it, cuz. We can say your name without you feeling like we're going against you, my nigga. There is no competition. We're family. Okay? New York, Los Angeles, Detroit. We're all family. Wisconsin, anything in America is all family. My big brother's Pete Rock. Okay? Raekwon. Okay? It's not always a problem. And when I said it, nobody said shit. Then when Kendrick said it, everybody wanted to go against the boy. I'm gonna wake the whole entire coast up for the wrong reasons, cuz. You don't wanna wake us up for the wrong reasons, man. We're not playing. I think everybody should know that by now. We're not gonna allow nobody to touch anything from the coast. There's consequences and repercussions for anything from the coast that gets harmed from out of town bullshit. You understand me? We love New York, Miami, Atlanta, New Orleans, Texas, Arizona. Chicago. Especially Chicago, the windy, cuz. Come on, man. Okay? We love y'all. But see, we never had problems from Chicago, from New Orleans from Texas, Arizona. They West Coast. But New York, they always want to feud, man. Stop. We love y'all. Like my homeboy Bobby Schmurder, man. It's my nigga right there, cuz. He fuck with my nephew Jabari. You know what I'm saying? He hood. 
So it's like, you know, it just gets irritating that you can't say anything without somebody getting upset about something. When nobody really wants to get down, cuz. Did you and Kendrick ever have a conversation about that, about that verse after he did it? Of course. Okay. Can you, can you share any of it or is that? If I tell you, I gotta <laughs> you gotta kill me. Okay. <laughs> but how, how, how did it, how did I'll it let you know this? Okay. He wanted to make a point and he made it. Oh yeah. And the crazy thing about it, cause nobody really knew. Like, damn, corrupt is who he fucks with and look up to. Yeah. You motherfucking right. And I got a couple more sleeper cells out there. You hear me? Sleeper cells. You'll never know they fuck with me cuz until they sell a ticket. Get it out of here. You heard what Kendrick said. Not only that, who can see him? They can't. Before they even try and see Kendrick, there's 17 people in line that's going to serve anybody that want to see Kendrick, me, Snoop, J-Rock, any of us. Yeah. Schoolboy, Ab, any of us. Roscoe. See, Roscoe's this flamboyant. He wants to jump in the front, so I think I, I can't stop because he's going to jump in the front like, I'm in there. <laughs> stop. Let's go. We up. Oh, shit. He's gone. He's going to eliminate him seeds. And we do this for a living cuz, you understand me, the West Coast, we live for this. New York is the ones who taught us. Uh, Annihilate MC. I'm hanging out with Be Real. And uh, he, he introduced me to dabs. And he said, be careful with these dabs. Let me show you what could happen if you overdo it. And he showed me a video of Roscoe <laughs> with the dabs. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? You know the video I'm referring to? <laughs> no. You know, I don't even have to say which video. I have to say, all I have to say is the video. <laughs> what about it, though? Are you a dab smoker yourself? Not at all. Not at all? No. Okay. Uh, but you do have a weed-related product. Medicine. Legally. Legally. Indeed. Oh, and what is the name of it? It's called Corrupt's Moon Rocks. Okay. You know, a lot of people think like, uh, okay, like uh, Corrupt is like, uh, he's not the only one that got Moon Rocks. I never said I invented this shit. Moon Rocks is a certain type of uh, medicine. Okay. Certain type of weed. We, we got some uh, over here? Yeah. Let's, let's go ahead and... Uh... Oh, you think we're going? So explain what this is. We have two different strands. We have okay. the Girl Scout cookie. You understand me? Which is the main bud. Infused with hash oil, then battered like shake and bake chicken. Battered in keef. Wow. Hear me now? God damn it. Look at all this goddamn shit. See what I'm talking about? Yeah, it gets on your fingers. Shit. And then we have the killer OG strand of the moon rock, which is OG Kush. Same process. Mm -hmm. And you know, I mean, the people like it and that's all that matters. We basically supply the dispensaries. We're a legalized business. Dope. Uh, we supply California with it. And um, we have a medicine line. And it's the number one requested medicine on planet Earth. Nobody requests any other type of weed more than they request the corrupt moon rocks. Now, how much we've done this in less than a year process? Uh, what's the cost for a gram of getting moon rocks? I mean, you know, the, the, well, the, the retail you know, usually. What do you it's see? Thirty dollars normally, right? Thirty dollars a gram. But uh, one place hitting people for forty dollars. That's how much it's in effect or requested that he can get forty dollars a gram hear me now <laughs> any more information if i tell you you have to kill me yeah 
And what's, what's the website? Is there a website for it? Of course it is. www.corruptmoonrocks.com When the whole Roger Sterling thing happened, you and V. Staviano were seen together. That's right. That's, that's your my, homie? That's my killer. Indeed. My little home girl. Y'all knew each other for a while? Indeed. When all this broke, what was your take on it? Well, that's why I went to go see her. Okay. You know, because uh, I didn't know what was going on. Somebody called me and told me V was in trouble. So I went to go see her. And all that mess cracked. I had to go check on her. I'll do that with any of my friends. Make sure she's all right. If she was all right? Totally. Um, There's a little turmoil going on, you know what I'm saying, with all this bullshit. You know what I'm saying? Were you surprised that Sterling had to sell the team after all that happened? I mean, hey, you know. Mr. Sterling, I don't have a problem with this guy. He's a great guy. But the thing is, you got to keep your game clean, man. These people are always trying to take somebody down. And look, he's a good man. They took a good man down. So you don't agree with they, what happened? I don't agree at all. They took a good man down. So what? What? Man, they took a good man down. He ain't did nothing to nobody, my nigga. He didn't do nothing to anybody. Well, you know what was interesting? Who did he harm? Mm -hmm. What's the crime? So oh, was... him and his wife had problems? Well, he was racist. So the fuck what? Isn't that what it is? Now, another thing. He's racist. He's saying all these things about niggas and all the rest of that. What the fuck did everybody thought he was before they heard it? They didn't believe an elephant was heavy. <laughs> they had to see it. You would think that what someone you, well, that owned a, you know, that you owned know a company crazy with about mostly it? black okay. people. So which one of these motherfuckers, this white that you think ain't? Mark you Cuban. shake hands with all these racist motherfuckers. Are you white? I'm white. All right. Are you racist? I don't think so. You know, I can tell. It's in your eyes. The people you work with. Mm -hmm. What about your grandparents? <laughs> I'm just saying, no. Well, you know, from from what I read, it seemed like even you judge people off their merits and what they do. You don't judge them off their history and that bullshit, man. Look, if you don't like the guy because he's racist, don't work for him, nigga. The fuck you gonna do? Change him? Niggas older than your grandparents. The fuck you gonna change these people? Well, V. Staviano seemed like she was still with Sterling afterwards because there was some yeah, situation. She don't give a fuck. That's why I went to go talk to her and let her know, man, fuck these people. You and Donald is good, man. Fuck everybody, cuz. Just do what you do. Enjoy yourself, man. And just relax. And have a ball. And if you let this guy, he's your homeboy like that or whatever y'all fucking doing, who gives a fuck? Enjoy yourself. Now, the wife is upset. She didn't like the nigga at all in from the first fucking place. How you know? Because she was quick to bounce out. Yeah. Marriage is, you're going to have infidelities in marriage. And when your wife is really with you, they don't leave. Yeah. Man, she was so quick to jump on the motherfucking train to Georgia, nigga. It was over. Yeah. She was just looking for a motherfucking escape goat. Yeah. Okay? Real is real. When you're married... Your husband is going to make mistakes. You might make mistakes. I tell people all the time, don't get married if you can't understand this equation. If your wife or your husband was to fuck around on you, would you stay? And they say, no. Or they say, well, I don't know if I would. You're not ready to be married. Mm -hmm. Married means you're there for life because when they fuck up, you still stay. You should have never gotten married. Yeah. And they have to fix themselves too. Okay? Yeah. You got a fucking billionaire nigga and shit. You, man, this ain't the only girl he been around. Yeah, 
<laughs> you mad at her? Why? Because it got public? <laughs> what about the mother motherfucking bitches? Well, you know, I, I interviewed... Huh? That she knew about. But since it didn't kick up so much dust and noise, yeah. she couldn't utilize to crack the game. What about them? Out of all the years they've been married, you think this is the first thing that came in, in the problem? The fuck out of here. Lady, I ain't mad at your game either. I'm so his wife too. I'm not mad at your game either, cause you do what you do. I'm not mad at your game, okay? I just know your game. Get it together. I'm from sixties. When the Rodney King rides happened in LA. Indeed. Were you were you out riding? <laughs> of course not. No. I'm Gotti I'm a scholar. I'm not a criminal. But well, I did go hit the streets, me, Warren G, and DLC. <laughs> we was at Dr. Dre's house watching it on television, and Warren G was just like, hey, cuz, let's go into the streets. And we went to the jungle. It was the first time that Bloods walked up to me and was like, what's up, corrupt blood? Man, I fucks with your shit. I was shocked, like, damn. I was accepted in the jungle. They came and said hi to me and shit. I'm like, wow. The jungle's in Inglewood. The jungle is LA. Oh, my bad. Off of Martin Luther King and motherfucking rodeo, nigga, and all that shit right there. The jungle. Not the bottoms. I think you think about the bottoms. Okay, yeah. Yeah, no, the jungles. Off of Crenshaw. Right. You hit that wop wop. Magic Johnson Theater and all that shit. In the movie theater where everybody almost got killed watching Colors. <laughs> <laughs> Off of La Siena. I, re I remember that. <laughs> Rodeo, nigga. <laughs> cracking. Now, you know, when, you, when you look at how L.A. was and, and what you felt back then, and you look at what's been happening now. Now, what are we supposed to do about this? Then they wonder why it's going to be a riot or if it's going to be a riot. Come on. Come on. Now it ain't even about whether it's white or black or whatever it is. What it's about, or whether it's the police or whatever. What it's about is there's too many incidents. Yeah. That's just it. The incidents are the problem. But see, there's been so many incidents that ain't been recorded that have not touched the airwaves, that have not gotten this attention. There's so many incidents that has happened that have not gotten this publicity. Have you had, you know, when you were, when you were, you know, before, you know, your rap career and everything else like that, did you have problems with the police in terms of them? I don't drive. You don't drive? You know what? Does you get, people get pulled over when they Every drive? Every motherfucking time. Even when I don't do nothing wrong, I got pulled over. So you stopped driving? Why should I? I'd rather for my brother to drive somebody else who has better luck than me. <laughs> 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 you know okay. And police don't never pull cars over. I'm going to roll with cars, you know. Here, take this cheese. I'll roll with cars. Me driving, though? They pull me over every fucking time. And why did you pull me over? Uh, you were swerving. Racial profiling. Do you think that all these incidents is going to cause a change in how things happen? Has it caused a change before? I don't know. I don't know. Well, I think that's the key equation. Yeah. It's the million dollar equation. Has it caused a change before? How could it have caused a fucking change if it's still here. Yeah. I interviewed Schoolboy Q yeah. a while back. Indeed. Uh, Schoolboy Q is from Hoover. Indeed. What he told me, and you know, he, he told me he was extremely active earlier in life. Indeed. <laughs> but what he said was that the, the gang situation in L.A., is, is far from what it was in the 90s. That shit is over with, kind of, like, you know what I mean? It takes it takes a gang member, a real gang member, to step forward and actually do something or say something for it to actually stop, like, I mean, I'ma still rap the way I rap, like, I'ma still rap, I mean, because that's where I'm from, but at the same time, it's just music. Don't want nobody to think that I'm out there actually doing that right now, like, this is past history, like, stuff, like, stuff I'm talking about, honestly, 
it's relevant, but it's irrelevant at the same time. I'm giving you history now, like, you know what I mean? Rather when Dog Pound and, and Snoop and all them was doing it, like, it was more of, this is what's happening, really going on right now, you know what I mean? Like, Game Banger was serious. When, like, I used to be scared when certain Dog Pound songs come on, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> just looking at the video, because I look at the visual of it, and I know what it really is. You get what I'm saying? Like, it's shit really going on like that. Like, the way that video looked, that's how niggas hang out. Like, it's not like that no more. Totally. Just like in the 90s, it was far from it was in the 80s. So you're saying the 80s was worse? Woo! Woo! <laughs> The, the crack era, yeah, right. Ooh. There we go. The, the the birth of the crack era in the eighties. Okay. Well, w why why do you think things have changed so much in, in the gang culture in L.A.? It's called evolution. Okay. Everything changes. It grows or it depletes. It's one or the other. You know, and um, it's still here though. That's one fact. Yeah. It's still here. Whether it's worse or not, irrelevant. It's still live in effect. Indeed. I interviewed Trady. Mm -hmm. I asked him about how you see artists who join gangs after they become popular artists. Mm hmm this is this is what, what Trady had to say. You had an interesting trend recently. Uh, I mean, not you, but <laughs> you've seen an interesting Trace, trend recently. Dave. When you see Y'all people Trady alone. who haven't been affiliated with <laughs> gangs join gangs, affiliate themselves with gangs later on in life. You've seen that with like Lil Wayne. Uh, you've also seen it with Chris Brown. Yes. Uh, um, yeah, I don't Lil know Wayne what the situation happened. Like that. You know, at that club oh, yeah, with, with Chris with Brown and too. Sugar, whatever. But you know. The first thought was, okay, this sounds like it's gang related. Yeah. You know, what I mean, it just did. from the from the outside, it did. from the outside. I, 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 you know, how, how do you feel? Like you know, as someone that has been banging since ten years old, how do you feel when someone who's rich and successful, that's never been around gangs before, decides in their mid twenties or, or so forth to start affiliating themselves with gangs? Well, <laughs> I feel it has to either be. A psychological defect <laughs> where you don't want to enjoy your life and enjoy your wealth and, you know, uh, ride around on boats and, you know, pop bottles and just, just you know, live a, a, a stress-free, you know, uh, a life, life uh, <laughs> as far as attracting unwanted attention and aggression upon yourself. Why would you want to be rich and start fighting people I mean that's it makes no sense to me so you know I, I see it as like the peer pressure aspect is that you know is this what you really want for yourself or do you feel that this is the only way you'll be secure in certain areas so are you buying into it for protection or that's the only that's the only logical conclusion that I can come to because I mean I can't see somebody waking up one day and like you know okay the Bentley's in the driveway you know Bentley's in the driveway couple of mil in the bank pie uh, well, let me go to the hood and get shot at let me go stand on the corner and get shot at so people could say oh man that's a tough guy people gonna say you stupid as you know you already know so I don't get it. <laughs> what did you expect him to say from that question is self explain you just wanted him to say it <laughs> wanted him to say it <laughs> that ain't right I, I, I want them I want boys to... be man if they want to do they do let them do the do they the ones got to write it out cause okay don't throw them under the bus at least they ain't out hurting nobody Right? Fair enough. Music saves lives. All these people making music, these kids, they making music and they they doing something positive with themselves and you know they ain't hurting nobody, you know what I'm saying? Cause 
Whatever choice they make, they got to ride it out. That's what's going to teach them how to be grown and grow up. They make the wrong choice. They got to gotta pay the cost to be the boss. They're going to have to learn the hard way, cuz. But there is there is always a cost when, when you affiliate yourself. You got to pay the cost you, you affiliate to yourself. be the boss. You've lost a lot of friends. You got to pay the cost to be the boss. Okay? Yeah. You want to be something, you got to pay. There's no reason to ask the same questions over and over again. It's the same question that's been asked for over three to four years now. Who's real? Who's not? Who's this? Who's that? Who gives a fuck? All right? The kids ain't out harming nobody. The boys ain't out harming nobody. They choose to want to game bang at this time. Hey, man, they got to ride that up. All right? They're going to have to learn like we did. The only difference is we really there. For them, I don't know whether they really there. I don't know what they've done. I don't know what they're part of. I'm not there in their neighborhood. I don't know their homies. I don't know. So I can't even speak on it. I can't say whether they real or they not. All I know is I like them. So that's all that matters to me. I don't give a fuck. I like Lil Wayne. Yeah. I like fucking Chris Brown. I like I these kids. I, I like these too. guys. I do that's too. all that matters to me. You know what I'm saying? You and Shook I like Slim? Baby. That's my killer. I love Slim. I love these guys. The, the, you know... Yesterday, actually, Lil Wayne said that he wants to leave Cash Money. You heard about that? Are you serious? Dead ass. Lil Wayne went on Twitter. Uh huh. Hold on. No way. Are you serious? And then what? Okay, so Lil Wayne went. So I'll go ahead and read read it to you. Okay. He said, "To all my fans, I want you to know that my album won't and hasn't been released because Baby and Cash Money Records refused to release it." Damn. This is not my fault. I am truly and deeply sorry to all my fans, but most of all to myself and my family for putting us in this situation. Mm. I want off this label, nothing to do with these people, but unfortunately, oh my God, it ain't serious? that easy. I am a prisoner and so is my creativity. Again, I am truly sorry and I don't blame you if you're fed up with waiting for me in this album, but thank you. Are you serious? Yep. Now I, That's his real Twitter? That's his real Twitter, and I and I called his manager Damn. and uh, the deep. president of, of uh, Young Money. Oh, that's deep. And uh, you know these guys, when I when I run certain things by them, if, if certain things aren't right, they'll hit me right away and say, "No, no, that's not what happened." Boom, oh, boom. that's pretty deep. They, they they didn't respond. Not to say that it's true, but usually when I get it wrong, they'll respond and, and tell me what. Hey, really that's pretty on. deep. And that's his real deal. Yeah. You know Wayne? It's my guy. And you know Baby, you've already said that. Yeah, that's my killer. Baby Insulin. Yeah. Wayne is my guy. Damn. Ooh. That's deep. It, it, it seems like the two of them really do have a father-son type relationship. I know, I know Baby refers to Wayne as a son mm -hmm. to, to people he talks to. You know, mm -hmm. not just, that's not just a, you know, an entertainment thing. Indeed. It's a real thing. Totally. I, I was surprised it happened. Yeah, me too. Wow. That's a, that's a lot. Think the two of them will work it out? Huh. Knowing what you know about both of them? I think we shall find out. Indeed. We'll find out. Damn it. That's a lot. That's that. <laughs> that's deep. We were yeah, talking about what a twenty-year relationship. That, yeah, right. You know what I'm 20, saying? Twenty, two like, decades. But you know what? A lot of people go. Me and Snoop and Daz went through our ups and downs. Right. You, you and Daz. You know I, I remember. I, I came by this the studio this one time, man. This was about, probably about. Eight years ago, nine mm -hmm. years ago, I was by a studio where there was a bunch of pitfalls. Sound like when I was with Def Row. 
think you were with Death Row at the time. Right, right. And I remember we were talking about doing a mixtape, and I said, well, listen, right now, I'm working with Daz also on some shit. He'd go, and then it got real tense in the room, and then it was like, no, we don't fuck with Daz. Yeah, but don't, it, don't y'all, done yeah, days. And now y'all worked it out. Last time I talked to you, Daz put me on the phone with you. Yeah, that's <laughs> my brother, man, yeah. you know? When it's real, it's real, you know? And uh, Dog and Dale Mar was hot at me. They, Dog and Daz was real hot at me for the decision that I made, and I felt they shouldn't have been, and the end result of it is, you know, uh, we worked it out and um, got it together, you know what I'm saying? Because we're really family. Yeah. And all, you know, brothers and sisters and all of that. You go through your ups and downs and separation and all that, but you never lose the fact of your family ties when it's real. You know what I'm saying? Ours is real. And that's why Dog accepted me back. And so did Daz. See, they accepted me back as I came back. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, you know what I'm saying? Hopefully, Baby and Wayne will work that out. If there's anything with that, who knows what that shit is? I don't know. I don't see it. You and Sugar still close? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We cool. Yeah. Real cool. I ain't got no problem with the old man. Sugar changed my life. We had um, Crooked Eye. Indeed. You know, and I guess you you were like the OG when Crooked Eye first came to Death Row and everything else Indeed. like that. And you, I understand you mentored him quite a bit. Um, my killer. Yeah. But it was Big C style who brought him to the table. And uh, Dog is the one that gave him the opportunity. You know what I mean? But since I first heard him, that's when I just, you know, I rack up the MCs. <laughs> you know what I mean? And then that's when I joined the part of Forces and you know, make sure the boy is right. And, uh, and I just talk to them and give them that influence they need. Now, if I remember correctly, the the, the New York, New York verse, mm-hmm. wasn't that based on you battling a bunch of New York MCs? Mm-mm. Did you ever battle a bunch of MCs like, or, or something? Or? Indeed. At the tunnel. The Tuttle. Indeed. Tell me about that. Was that the Tuttle? They wanted to see Corrupt. The entire crowd. And I served everybody one by one. <laughs> <laughs> no, so who were who some of the rappers that you, you were serving? The streets. Okay, so it wasn't even known rappers. It was just whoever wanted some. Okay, that's what's up. Indeed. Real MC. <laughs> yeah, from the door. That's what's up. I was the real rapper. Yeah. Back then, everybody would love to serve a real rapper. Like, oh man, y'all don't really rap. Try and serve you. <laughs> <sighs> I was the antichrist right. of the mic. Served MCs for a living. I was fucking Bodegash. It was the worst. Ramrod. What was your greatest battle outside of that Snoop Dogg battle? There is no greatest battle outside the Snoop Dogg battle. Because <laughs> that was the greatest battle. That was the greatest. <laughs> all right, man, I'm good. I think, I think we got it all. <laughs> 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 <laughs>